Hi, yeah. you said. Hello, Nadia. Uh, You are one of the keynote speakers. You are the keynote speaker of Vår Mötet. <laughs> okay, am I? Okay. Yes, you are. And you have just been talking to the big audience yes, here. Yes, I have. And you scared them, maybe. Oh, How come? I don't know. It wasn't my intention to scare them. I didn't mean to scare them. I just, um, I think because I started to articulate something that people are too afraid to articulate, which are three things. One is what people privately think about the issues of inclusion at home, at a party, on a Sunday night, with their friends. This is the first thing, and people get very uncomfortable about that. The second thing is the threat that people's jobs, livelihoods may disappear if they do not start to include. Um, and therefore the idea that you know, you're waiting and waiting, but all of these people are out there. If you have more taken språk, Sveriges Dervers Riksverbund. If you want more mångfald, then you can go to the Mongkultur Centrum, you can go to Tryck, uh, you can go to Afro Svenskarna, you can go to individual. I mean, all those things are there. So the question is, why not? So that was the second thing. Mm. Um, and maybe the, um, maybe the third thing is that they see that I have now come to a point when I say no. I brought up something called artistic terrorism, which makes people just go, what the beep are you saying? But actually, it's as good as killing people off, as far as I'm concerned. That if you constantly deny the existence of someone for whatever reason, from naivety to just downright, I choose not to include these people, you are as good as erasing them off the face of the earth. It is a strategic sometimes. Mm -hmm. A work where people go, well, if I just put that there and just say that like that, then it'll just change it slightly. It'll mm. make me look good and et cetera, et cetera. So I think those three things were um, provocative for people and um, emotional for people. I felt a lot of emotion in the room. Um, I felt that people um, were exposed. I could feel the ones, the people that were leaning, literally leaning towards me. And you could see people, and that's at the back, mm. and others who... Yeah. So what you're saying is, mm. if we come over our fear yes. of of color, of racism, mm -hmm. of funktionshinder, and start to work with it in the museums, we yeah. might be extremely successful and extremely up to date. And you will lock. Um, Lena Alderson has said there's 76 percent besök. That's high. It's actually 100 percent you're looking for. Yeah. Who are the other 35.4 percent? I mean, where yeah. are they? Yeah. How high do you want to go? I think. Today and hopefully the next days are about the tools that you need to make the change are in you. Yeah. You've studied for up to a hundred years of education in that room. Yeah. You've been able to find and archivera so many things and yeah. you cannot find the key to this, which is other people. So I have a question. Mm. They made like an enquete undersökning, yes. where, which showed that only four percentage of the people working in the museums mm. are from uh, foreign heritage. Mm. But the population is about like 15% mm. or something. Mm. Do you think you have to have the representation among the people working yes. as well? Yes. Yeah. Done. Done. Good. Check. So we should just shape up on that matter. Yeah. Okay. So the question that But you, you also have to be careful what representation is. I don't mean you're bringing in a black person because they're black. No. There are educated archivists. Yeah. Uh, project leaders, yeah. um, museum curators in this country yeah. and in the Nordic regions. Yeah. There is no excuse now. No. And that's why I keep going back to the self, because if you don't actually give a damn, yeah. you won't even go out of your safe zone to find the people. Mm. Dom Fins, they've been here for years. Mm. They are here. Yeah. So, uh, yes, I think that there must be representation. We've done it for women. Marvelous job. Now file that. Now the next and yeah. the next and the next. Yeah. There's something in Sweden that people are not comfortable with. It's fine when you're talking about men and women, but when I say there's not enough people of African descent, people just go, Where, where's the, where's, like I said today, where's the interpreter? People go... Mm. But how can you include people if you don't know who they are? Mm. You know, it's all the same. Mm. No, it's not. He's a white man behind the camera. I'm a black British woman. Mm. And you are from Sweden. I mean, mm. you must see the difference in order mm. to make the join in the middle. Yeah. Let's just talk about a general democracy. Yeah. So do you think that we are like um, victims of shame, all of us? Is it the shame that keeps us from doing things? 
I think it's a combination. I think that's a very that's a very strong word, and I think a very important word. Yeah. And I certainly found the word shame that exists in a lot of the minority communities here. Yeah. The feeling of shame that they feel shameful about their language or yeah. the culture they've been made to feel ashamed. Is Sweden ashamed of itself? That's why I also made the image today of the parallel waking up that's happening, hmm. and the majority of cultural workers who are white are going, "What the hell have I missed here? Why do I not have something in my bag?" Mm. I can't cope with this sense of despair or frustration or anger that's coming up in the Samhelet. I've got nothing in my vest gun. So not only I'm not necessarily feeling shame, I'm feeling shock. I'm thinking of something that the talk, um, the man speaking before you was from Melody Festival, yes. Christer Björkman, and he was talking about mandat. Mm. And he said, if you have a vision, you should demand and tell your boss that you you have to have mandat. Mm. You have the right to have a mandat. And mm. I'm thinking of minority groups. Mm. What is happening now, I feel, with mm. your anger, mm. and also as a representative of TRIC, mm. this organization that demands yep. something mm. different of the society, is that you put pressure mm. also. You take the mandat yourself as yeah. a minority. Mm. And that's good. Yeah, we Because you give us as an institution you put the demand on us in 2014 we can do it ourselves yeah we don't need the institution to do it that's scary so we will be out of jobs if we don't listen i don't know but at no. the moment for example i don't know what it's going to be like and i need to speak to you about that yes. but one of the things we have at the trick event this uh, friday saturday and sunday yes. is we have one woman and we built a museum in the theater can you tell a little bit about trick what it is yes uh, trick is an organization that started about four years ago and it is an organization there really to promote, celebrate and educate in uh, an Uta, um, those artists, actors, professors, doctors, I mean, not professors and doctors, but kulturell albeter, I would say. It's really an organization that is there to promote and celebrate African descent and Afro-Swedish artists on national stages in whatever permutation that might be. Opera singer, director, actor, mm. for mm. And what we do is a series of things we create, productions, writing, but we also do two other things, which is we go out, of course, and educate. There's mm-hmm. a different reaction in the group at the moment about we're constantly going out for Clara, for Clara. Ah, so there's a little bit of tension there, which I think is good. People are tired of foreclaring all the time. Um, and then the third thing that we do, really, I suppose, is to try to change an inner picture, to try to get an inner sense of pride and uh, diversity and strength in a society that refuses to see us and mm. to do it on our terms. Mm. Um, it is predominantly for African and Afri- Afro-Swedish mm-hmm. and therefore is a recognition of the white Swede within the Afro-Swedish community. Yeah. It's not about out you go, it's actually about we know you're there, but this time the focus is on us. Yeah. Uh, and also as well that that, w- I mean, this is the other thing that's important about Trick as well, is that it's actually fulfilling a national remit, which is a diverse program of work of which not one theatre at this point in this country is fulfilling. The African descent plays, mm. where are they? Yeah, and include because my- you're a director and you're working with Tis Theater, that oh. is for deaf people, mm. but you're also working as a director in other... In other, kind, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you, you lack... Well, the play writers that are writing about no, it? No, they're here. They're, they're all here. Again, yeah. it's the same thing we talk about today. They're here, but nobody's looking for them. Okay. And I think one of the important things is the idea that we're saying we're giving art to everyone we're not. When you open the newspapers, when people are sitting here who pay their tax money, mm. they want to see everything. They open the paper and they see the same. Now, those same are fantastic and amazing, but it is the same. Yeah. You have nothing to choose from. When was the last time you saw a play from Calcutta? When was the last yeah. time you saw um, from Japan, Tokyo, mm. a writer? When mm. was the last time you saw anything to do with an Aboriginal culture? Not because they're Hmong Fal, but because they're const. Because they're really good. Great artists. Yeah. And, you know, we sit there and go, ah, we've got all of this. You've yeah. got six letters of a 27-letter alphabet. You've only got six. Yeah. That's all you get all the time. Mm. And the citizen must start to demand, say, ah, 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 this ain't good enough. No. This is not just about the Red Sea. I'm mm. looking at your repertoire and I'm seeing the same, same, same. Where's the work from the other countries? That's what I pay for. I pay for diversity. Yeah. The yeah. citizen must do that. Well, they will. They'll just go off and do it themselves or stop mm. going to the theatre and watch it on TV. Mm. So, yes, I think there's um, this huge hope. And uh, the, the reason that you see me in this particular frame of mind as well is because I'm quite obsessed with Rosa Parks at the moment. Oh, how come? I don't know. 
her, she came up again for me, I think, when I was kind of Google, actually Googling Mandela, and he was, she was a further build for Honom. Uh, Rosa Parks is the African-American woman who sat on the bus and basically started the civil rights movement. Yeah, she refused to move. She refused to, yeah, she refused to move. And I keep imagining in my head the moment when, the, you know, the guy comes up to her and says, excuse me, ma'am, yeah. can you need to move to the back of the bus? And she turns around, she says, no, whatever she said. He says, I'm sorry, ma'am, you didn't seem to hear what I said. I said, you need to move to the back of the bus. And she goes, I'd like to sit here. And she says, ma'am, I really don't want to handle you now today, but you know at the back of the bus is where the Negroes sit. You need to sit at the back of the bus. Oh, we're going to have to lift you up physically. Well, I choose to stay here. Ma'am, we were called a and, and the rest happened. The rest happened. I'm obsessed with that moment where you say, did it get? The turning point. You're looking for it. The, yeah, the turning point. Because you might, it might happen now. Well, I mean... Also, you know, I'll tell you something. Yes. In Malmö, mm? 12 years ago, they started an activist museum. They called it a hot spot. Mm -hmm. Have you heard about yeah. it? No, when Fadime mm -hmm. was killed, yes. mm -hmm. they made an exhibition um, that was supposed to react very quickly to political mm -hmm. issues. So they made an exhibition about it, uh, and it was very successful, and they made a series of exhibitions. And now it's, they closed the idea of hotspot. Mm -hmm. So my question to you is, mm -hmm. what do you think will be the hotspot of 2014? <laughs> The, um, the, hot the turning point. The turning point will be when the right-wing parties hit the street and people will be called from whatever position they are in to stand up against it. The turning point is close. Some people say, well, they were always here. And I say, yeah, they were always here. But this is now, this will divide families. This will divide friends from each other when that moment comes, and it is coming. You know, it's not, are people going to march? So what we are doing, actually, hmm? is you're telling us that we are getting prepared. Oh, yeah, yeah. You've got no choice. All of us. It, the question is what is, is the idea. The question isn't if you're going to fight. It's are you ready? Yeah. The question isn't if there's going to be a war or you will be asked about your democracy. Mm. The idea is do you have the argument to defend your democracy? So that was what you were doing to us yesterday. <laughs> it warmed it. You were mobilizing us. You, you were mobilizing your cultural museum workers. Prepare them for the war. Question is how afraid are they? You scared us. Oh, I didn't mean it. I'm a nice person, really. Uh, Here, uh, I think so. <laughs> I can't work with this. I mean, come on. Thank you. Thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> Excellent.